Welcome to Sandwiches of History Vacation Edition. Our uh, guest host today started working in kitchens when he was 14 years old. He later went on to graduate from the Culinary Institute of America at Greystone at Napa. He's worked in world famous restaurants like the French Laundry, uh, the Vale Cascade Hotel, and Olives, a Todd English restaurant. In 2002, he started a cake baking business out of his house, later moving to an independent location. And in 2006, both he and his business, Charm City Cakes, were tapped to star in Ace of Cakes on the Food Network. He's written four cookbooks, including Duff Bakes, Think and Bake Like a Pro at Home, Super Good Baking for Kids, and Super Good Cookies for Kids. Please welcome the one and only Duff Goldman. Oh, hi there. Welcome to Sandwiches of History. I'm Chef Duff. Barry was kind enough to allow me to uh, guest present on Sandwiches of History, which I'm very excited about. This is absolutely one of my favorite accounts on Instagram. You probably recognize me from uh, television. I eat dessert and I tell people what I think of them. Uh, <laughs> and I also own a bakery in Baltimore called Charm City Cakes. But I am a lifelong lover and consumer of sandwiches. Today we are going to be making the Aspic Jelly Sandwich from the up-to-date sandwich book published in 1909. I tell you, I feel like there's just not enough aspic in the world. When you think about aspic, you sort of conjure visions of shag carpet and sunken conversation living rooms. We've turned it into amazing dessert. But I feel like savory, salty, meaty jello on a sandwich sounds pretty incredible to me. Let's get into this. Step one, I'm going to soak half a cup of chicken liquor. I'm gonna assume is uh, chicken broth. I looked online, all I got was bottles of booze with uh, chickens on the label. All right, so that's gonna sit and the gelatin will soak up all that liquid and we'll do step two. Okay, step two. Add one and a half cups of chicken stock seasoned with a little parsley, celery, some cloves. This is a blade of mace, which I'm gonna use ground and call it a pinch. And then what I'm gonna do is let this heat up because I don't think you're gonna get any of the flavors from any of those aromatics without heating it. Here's a pinch of salt, a little bit of Fresh pepper. Now the other thing that the recipe says to do is to strain this out. And the other thing about heating this up is you're gonna want to melt the gelatin. You don't wanna boil your stock too much because then it gets cloudy. I'm gonna let this just kind of sit for about 20 minutes and really let these flavors kind of marry. And then we'll make the aspic. Okay, here we go. A little bit of that parsley actually came through, which is nice. Just get nice and melty. Here I have a quarter sheet pan. You know, I think it's probably gonna be better without the paper. I was trying to be too chefy. Now my aspic is gonna go in the fridge until it sets up. I totally forgot the most important step. I have to add chicken. This is evenly distributed. Okay, now this will go in the fridge for about two hours or so. All right, so to assemble this sandwich, it says to take some lightly buttered whole wheat bread, and then this is my favorite part. It says to cut the aspic into fancy shapes. I got a unicorn. I also have a snail and I have a brontosaurus because I have a three-year-old. Start with our brontosaurus. I mean, come on. And this is the comet or meteor that is falling from the sky about to wipe out all the dinosaurs. All right, so uh, let's give the aspic jelly sandwich a go. Mmm, good, chickeny. The butter's really nice on here. It's pretty rich. I think, you know, the aspic is thick. It's gelatiny, it's proteiny. Um, then you have all this butter underneath it. It's a pretty rich sandwich. Uh, it's really nice. I think I'd give this sandwich like a four, maybe a four out of ten. You know, which is a five out of ten. Textually, I think this sandwich could use just a little more, a little something. It needs some crunch. I mean, I don't know, pickles might be a little... Oh, I have a good idea. We're gonna make my great-grandmother's strudel breadcrumbs. Let me show you. Melt a good amount of butter. I like to melt butter on pretty high heat because what it does is 
uh, it helps get all the water out of the butter, and the, the butter will actually start to brown, it'll start to caramelize, uh, which gives it a, a really nice flavor, but also uh, getting all that water out of the butter will make whatever you're making in it that much more crunchy, right? Water ain't crunchy. Now what I'm gonna do is turn it down a little bit. So you don't want fire too hot when you're toasting the breadcrumbs. I'm using panko. You don't want the butter to puddle. Now this is a trick that I learned from my great grandmother. She would take breadcrumbs and toast them in a pan with a little bit of salt and some sugar and some cinnamon. The breadcrumbs, because they were kind of hard and crunchy, would take up space in between the layers of phyllo dough so that when you baked the strudel, there would be air in between those layers and they would just get so flaky. So see how nice and brown those got? I, uh, so I also made toast. Sorry, I forgot to say I was gonna make toast. I just made toast. Chicken jelly aspic unicorn snail. Probably texturally is the most appropriate. The reason why I believe they are open face is because the recipe specifically asks you to cut them into fancy shapes. What would be the point of cutting it into a fancy shape if it wasn't open-faced? Here is some crunchy, delicious, buttery, salty panko breadcrumbs. Look at that. Let's give this plussed up jelly aspic sandwich a go. What's really nice is that the chickeniness of the stock is still really coming through, but it's got a lot more stuff. Kind of, I don't know, gives it a little more harmony. I think making the toast was a really good idea. The toast was cool. The breadcrumbs are so nice on there. Salty, it gives a lot of texture. It kind of flows around your mouth and it really just sort of helps kind of break up all the, all the chicken. This is, I'm gonna have another bite. This is great. Give this like an eight out of 10. It kind of tastes like chicken in a biscuit. This was a really fun sandwich. Barry, thank you so much for having me. This was absolutely such an honor to do. I love what you do. I love your reviews. I love everything you do. The true excitement of the thing that you do. I love what you bring. And so uh, keep making them. Talk to you soon. An aspic snail.